God bless you. Welcome to Rise Up and Walk broadcast. I am your uh, host, Dr. Fernando Cottrell. I thank you once again for tuning in to this broadcast. I know God's going to speak to you and, and touch your heart and bring change in your life. Today we're going to be talking from John the 8th chapter. John the 8th chapter, first, uh, first uh, 10 verses. Uh, and it talks about a, um, a woman caught in the very act of adultery. It talks about uh, the religious people bringing a woman caught in the very act of adultery to, to bring accusation against Jesus. Um, do you know there are people that are waiting for you to mess up? There are people watching you and planning your demise. But Jesus will never leave you the way that he found you. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, that Jesus will never leave you the way that he found you. And the good news is that he forgives that's the whole summation of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, that he forgives, that he lifts, that he strengthens, that he encourages, that he makes things brand new. So no matter what act you're caught in, no matter who you've done it with, no matter what rumor is on your name, no matter who's bringing accus uh, uh, accu uh, accusation against you, Jesus will never leave you the way that he found you. When we look at this particular chapter and these few verses, we're going to just pick it up from verse, uh, verse, verse 9. And it says, And when they heard it, being convicted in their heart, their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even into the uh, last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. Now, let me just tell you what, happened, what happens here. Uh, he asked them, because they brought the woman to him, to him to bring accusation against her. And Jesus, being who he is, says, he that is without sin, let him be the first to throw the first stone at her. And verse 9 says, they begin, uh, they got convicted in their heart. In other words, what Jesus said impacted them so much because they knew within themselves they had sin as well. Right then, their motives were exposed. And now Jesus is left with, with the woman and, the, and Jesus and the woman are left alone now. And God wants to get you alone. See, sometimes when you're around a lot of people, there's always going to be accusations. There's always going to be somebody saying something. Somebody's going to pull up your past. Somebody's going to remember something from first grade. Somebody's going to remember you threw a snowball and bust somebody's window. But sometimes you need to be left alone with Jesus to get away from all the voices and all the influences that keep reminding you of who you were or what you've done. Jesus will never bring up your past to bring accusation against you. So now he's left with a woman alone who had committed adultery. In fact, she was taken, she was caught in the very act. Now, notice that it doesn't bring the man. It brings the woman. So that's another whole topic. But he's left alone with this woman who was caught in the very act. Now, can you just look at what kind of mindset she must have had? Embarrassment, shame, guilt, condemnation. Nobody loves me. I'm useless. I'm worthless. Who would want to marry me? Who wants to have a relationship with me? Because now rumors are going to start flying. But I tell you one person you can be left alone with, with a horrible past like that, and that's Jesus. You know why? Because he will never leave you the way that he found you. So Jesus now is left alone. In verse 10, it says, when Jesus lifted up himself and saw no one but the woman, he said unto her, woman, where are those that accuse you? He asked her, where are those that accuse thee? And he says this to her, uh, has no man condemned thee? Where are they? And in the immediate vicinity, they had left. So there was no one around her. So now Jesus addresses. Now she's alone. Where are those that bought you and, and, and thought they were perfect and tried to criticize you? Where are they? And she said, there are none. So we look at verse 11. She said, uh, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. He says, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. I believe I'm speaking to somebody here in Facebook. You're viewing this telecast. You're viewing uh, and hearing these words. And you've been under shame. You've been under guilt. You've been under condemnation. You've been under uh, a, 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 a cloud of, 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 of suspicion. You have things over your mind, things over your life. You're haunted by nightmares. You're haunted by dreams. You, you, you can't sleep at night. Anxiety is robbing you of peace. 
But Jesus says to this woman, just like he's saying to you now, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Jesus will never leave you the way that he found you. No matter what your past is, no matter who you've done it with, he will never leave you uh, the way he found you. Now, Jesus said here, I don't condemn thee. What he's saying is this. It doesn't mean he condones sin. Let me just make sure that he doesn't condone sin, but he does, his forgiveness is so thorough that there's no condemnation in it. He tells her, I don't condemn thee. Now, in the context of what it's talking about, she was just faced with some accusers who brought condemnation, who brought guilt through, through their pointing of the finger. Basically, what he's saying, uh, what they did actually was a self-righteous condemnation. It was a self-righteous accusation, meaning look at her in compared to us. We haven't done that, but she has, so she's lesser than us. And there are many of you, you are comparing yourself to others, and you feel lesser than, than others. You feel like you're low on the total pole. But as Jesus told this woman, who was caught in the very act, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. There are many of you watching right now. You feel like God, uh, you made a grave mistake. You've done something so wicked. Maybe you, you, got, you got a divorce. Maybe you got a sickness that's caused through something you shouldn't have done. Maybe you were shooting drugs and, 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 and you got uh, uh, through drug transfusion and using the bad needles, you got an infection. Maybe uh, you, you, you hit your wife and you know you shouldn't have and, and your children saw you abuse, abuse her. Maybe you stole something. Maybe you was in prison. What I'm saying is there's a cloud over you because you've been caught in the very act. And those that, are, that accuse you are not letting you forget it. But as Jesus told this woman, where are those that accused thee? And when he looked, she looked around, there was none. He said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. I want to encourage you, those that are viewing through Facebook right now, because that's where we're broadcasting to, to that audience, that God is saying to you, he doesn't condemn you. Go and sin no more. Now, why does he say go and sin no more? Because it seems like what you keep facing keeps coming on you. And you can't seem like you can't stop certain things. Well, when he forgives you, he puts himself inside of you and makes, his, makes himself responsible to help you not to do it anymore. He says, go and sin no more. People might say, oh, that's impossible. Not with the help of God in your life. He tells her, I forgive you. I don't condemn you, but don't get caught in this anymore. In other words, many of you seem like you can't stop doing certain things. You've got certain impulses and certain compulsive behaviors. But he tells her, with me now in your life as the change factor, you don't have to do that again. So I want to encourage you to see yourself as changed. See yourself lifted. See yourself forgiven. See yourself pulled up out of the very act. And the act that brought you into that, now God has given you his act, his ways inside of you. Now you're leaving unrighteousness and you're going to walk out righteousness. He says, go and sin no more. And I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you because many of you are facing what we're talking about. You can't seem to get over it. You're making decisions through it. You can't get that cloud off you. But we're going to pray and believe God that that cloud of condemnation will leave you. And, 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 and you'll be made whole and you'll go and you won't do it anymore. Jesus' love is so great, it's so powerful, it's so thorough that it cleanses you, empowers you, and gives you a new identity. And lastly, and most importantly, he writes your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Maybe there's some of you watching who don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you would like to know this great king. And you would like to know this great master. I'm going to give you an opportunity to pray as well. But number one, I want to pray for those who may be facing condemnation and guilt. Maybe you've been in the ministry and you've done something you shouldn't have done. Maybe you, I don't know, ran over a cat four years ago and you feel bad about it. I don't know. But you can be forgiven. You can have that, that cloud of condemnation lifted off of you. And you can be made whole. So we're going to pray for you first. And then we're going to pray for those who don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Father, I ask you to touch them. 
There are many that are viewing this broadcast, God, that, are, have, that have condemnation, that have guilt, that has shame upon them. They can't sleep. They got anxiety. They can't have proper relationships. They got imbalances because of this guilt and shame. Maybe it's of the past. Maybe it's something they're in right now. But as you told this woman, you said you don't condemn her. And you said you forgive her. And you said told her to don't do it anymore. So right now, I pray in the name of Jesus, those that are facing that heaviness, that cloud of darkness, that you will lift that, that let them know that they're still called. They, they still have purpose, that you see them as changed. You see them as new because of who you are and because of Jesus Christ's sacrifice on the cross for our sins. So touch them now, empower them in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for them right now, for wholeness in their life. Now, there's a group of you who may not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You've been under conviction. You've been under condemnation. You've been to church for you, but you never really submitted your heart to God. Let me tell you how you submit your heart to God. First of all, believe that you cannot uh, uh, save your own self. And the only way that you can have be in right standing with God is through his son, Jesus Christ, that he sent. In John 3, 16, God said, I've, I so love the world that uh, whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So, so love the world that he gave Jesus, that if you believe in him as the sacrifice for your sin, because you couldn't pay for it yourself, the Bible said you shall be saved. With, the, with your mouth you confess and with your heart you believe. You believe and God will let you know and you'll start growing in faith. But if that's you right now, I want you to pray this prayer of faith. Dear God, I come to you and I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to have mercy upon my soul. Please forgive me. I tried it my way. Now I want to try it your way. Take my name and write it in the Lamb's Book of Life. I thank you for forgiving me of my sins, for I am a sinner, and I acknowledge that I'm in need to be saved, to be delivered, to be made whole, and it's only through you. Father God, I don't understand it all, but I accept this and believe this by faith, and I thank you for it in Jesus' name. My friend, if you prayed that prayer, the Bible says that you are now saved, and I want to send you some literature. Uh, you can go to www.fernandocottrell.com to my website. Go to the contact portion of my website. Type in your information. And I will send you some literature. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Fernando Cottrell. Inbox me. Uh, say something on my page. If this message has impacted you, begin to share what has happened to you in your life. Begin to share this message that Jesus will never leave you the way that he found you. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you again. Thank <laughs> you.